Hey folks, how's it going? Peter here with BlackRock Business. Today we're going to talk about QuickBooks Point of Sale Desktop and importing items from an Excel spreadsheet. Before we get going, don't forget to jump on over to blackrockbusiness.com. We'll fulfill all your needs for QuickBooks and Point of Sale as well as going over some tips, tricks, blog posts, payments, payroll, all the things you need to run your business. First of all, I'm going to jump into an Excel spreadsheet that came out of somebody else's point of sale. It has all sorts of products, things in it. Uh, you're going to pay close attention to uh, the headings of the columns. And so you're just going to take a little snapshot of your Excel sheet before you go and try and import it so you know what's what. I've got departments. Uh, I've got supplier, which would be like a vendor. Uh, this item column here it looks like is a lot of different numbers and codes that stand for these products. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And then description, it looks like this is actually the name of these products. And we've got quantity, cost, price, that should help us out. All right, so I've got an idea of what's in this spreadsheet. Go back to point of sale, file menu utilities, import. On the import, we're going to hit next and we're doing inventory items. And this will probably be on default template. The default template is something that you can get out of this point of sale and it'll have all the different columns that you can import to QuickBooks point of sale. Uh, you can fill that out if you're just building your inventory to start with. I already have a file that's all created and stuff, so I'm going to use custom file. So which file? I'm going to browse to it, grab it, I'm going to select the worksheet, which is the only worksheet in this workbook item value list. And my data starts on row 2 because I had column headers. So choosing a file mapping. If you are, for the first time, bringing in this uh, spreadsheet, then you're going to have to create the file mapping. So if you're using the default inventory template, you can use that one. Otherwise, I'm adding a new one. So it pops up here, and I'm going to name the mapping up here. Let's see. We will call this Peter1. And I'm going to show all available fields. Current mapping was modified. Do you want to save it? Yes. So uh, item number, I am just going to leave that one blank because I'm going to let the point of sale auto number the items. And we have item name. Now, when I looked on my sheet, it looked like description was kind of like the name. Department name, easy, we got department. Department code, I didn't have any of those. Uh, item description, none of those because the one called description in there was pretty much like the name. Now, alternate lookup, I'm actually going to use uh, that item number as alternate lookup. And so if I headed back to that sheet, we looked at it again, item number, since it has uh, letters and numbers in it, I'm going to use it alternate lookup for that field. Um, a lot of these actually in this field I happen to know are barcode numbers, uh, but I can't put it into the UPC field because a lot of them are actually like this. So it's not going to go into the UPC field correctly. We are going to put it into alternate lookup. Alternate lookup is is also a lot like SKU. If you're familiar with a number of other POS systems, they might call it a SKU field. Uh, in QuickBooks Point of Sale, it likes to call it the alternate lookup field. So it's just letters or numbers that you can look something up by. Now, what else do we got here? Um, you might have an MSRP, which is like that price from the manufacturer that makes everybody feel like they're getting a deal. Put that in here. Uh, there's a lot of different columns here you can fill in. I am also going to look for regular price. That is going to be my price. And then uh, what else did I have? I had cost and quantity. Yep, those are the other ones I'm looking for. So, quantity one is going to be my quantity. 
Uh, as the point of sale progresses in its sales and ordering, the average unit cost will be an average of all the different prices you've ever paid from your vendor. Uh, but right now, since we have a starting cost to put into that, we're going to put that into average unit cost, and that'll be calculated along a timetable in the future. So I'm going to save my mapping of Peter 1. Save. Okay, and I'm going to hit next. And during the import, what field should point of sale use to determine if the record already exists? I'm going to tell it to look at the ALU field. And that is because this uh, column right here is full of values that are all unique. And if any of those values are already used by an item on my item list in the point of sale already, it will just update the information for that uh, particular product. So when duplicate records are detected during import, I am going to replace existing data with import data, including the blank fields. No, nope, ignoring the blank fields, because we don't want it to uh, import blank fields over information that's already there. If an item has no department, then where should I put it? I'm going to put it into the system department. Next. Alrighty, so it's saying number of inventory items in the file, 4968. Number of inventory items that will be added, 4967. That's looking good. And you're probably going to want to back up the company file before you import, just in case anything goes wrong. Uh, it did find some issues. Uh, it looks like one might have an issue because we got a difference of one between uh, those in the file and those that are added. So I click here and I can see that this row has a duplicate ALU code. And so what it's saying is that uh, two of those products in that file actually had the same ALU code. And that's fine with me. We'll just skip it. And I can look later and figure out what's wrong with that one and probably manually add it. I'm actually going to skip that just for the video so we can go ahead and add these. And there we go. The inventory item import is complete. Close. Now if I open my item list, we have all sorts of L's. Sports Hut stuff, and we have all my gardening stuff that I just imported. So if we go ahead and edit any of these, we can take a look and we can see that my average unit cost made it in there. Here's my price. Here's my on-hand quantity, which is two. And everything looks good. I have my ALU field. So thank you once again for coming along on this import journey with me. My name's Peter with Black Rock Business. And uh, just skip on over to our page there or give us a call. We'll answer any questions you have about QuickBooks Point of Sale. <laughs>